Can you really produce an adventure bike for two and a half thousand pounds? I've been riding the Sinus Terrain for the last couple of weeks to find out. But before we get into today's video, we probably ought to define what constitutes an adventure bike. To me, it's a machine that can be a practical everyday commuter given how many 1200 GSs I see in central London. It also needs to be able to carry you over long distances at a good speed, as well as go anywhere on any type of road surface. So that's how I'm going to break this review down. The city, the motorway, the green lanes, and a river crossing. So first up, is this little bike a capable commuter? So I've been riding it for a couple of weeks now in London, mainly commuting, and I think for the money, it's an amazing practical city bike. So I thought we'd start with a little walk around, just so I can show you how much bike you get for your British pound. 2,500 of them to be precise. Starting at the front end here, you've got um, some off-road type tires. I think they are, oh no wait, here we go, CST. Uh, absolutely no problems with them so far. I mean, on the tarmac, you're not really going to challenge the bike with that 125cc 11 horsepower engine, but no problems at all. Upside down forks, they look the business, feel pretty good as well. And then you've got LED daytime running lights here, not on because the bike's not started. Uh, LED indicators, a screen. So this takes a bit of the wind off your body, off your chest. Hand guards, these definitely keep the wind off your hands, so much so that it's like 35 degrees now. And actually, um, my hands are a little bit warm. The perforation on the back of the gloves isn't letting any air through, so I have to kind of lift my hands up a little bit. Great mirrors here as well, really good visibility, good adjustment. Uh, they seem like quite good quality given the price point of this bike. Nice wide bars, you can see they're risen up quite a bit there as well. LCD dash with, um, you know, trip, gear indicator, clock, USB port here, couple of buttons. Uh, that's your neutral indicator, indicator lights, uh, fuel gauge and rev counter. 14 litre tank here, which is absolutely plenty for a bike of this size. A bit of bodywork, this just looks like a radiator, but I think it just bulks the front of the bike out. Crash bars here, those are handy from a practical perspective and they look pretty substantial. A bash plate here, this is plastic, but quite thick plastic, not too bad. Nice chunky grips here with the rubber insert. Is that removable? Yeah, take those out if you want to off-road it. Same for the pillion. Seat's comfy, decent pillion seat, grab rail, LED indicators at the back, little LED strips down the back of the tail light there. And then you've got this full luggage. Now this is a 70 quid option, a big uh, top box that will fit a helmet in it. But you've also got these uh, panniers, this one a bit smaller because of the exhaust, but decent capacity. You know, not as big as like a full size bike, but more than enough for your commuting at least. And I found it so practical just to be able to stick a, a you know, some extra clothes in there if you want to get changed when you get to the office, be able to leave your lid in there when you park up. So yeah, that's pretty great. And then this particular bike has the Toro full system exhaust on, so it's a little bit louder than stock, or probably quite a bit louder. So that's it, I mean, what more can you ask for for two and a half grand? So despite the fact that all that equipment means it has a bit of a big bike feel, you know, it's still only 150 kilograms, which means it's perfect for traffic around town like this, perfectly nimble for filtering, nice wide bars and the seat isn't too high either at 800 mils so it's a doddle in traffic really especially when it gets um you know much heavier than this and traffic's at a standstill i've found it really easy i'd say the only downside of the crash bars is that they do make the bike a little bit wider so if you're trying to squeeze through those very narrow gaps You've just got to watch those crash bars, especially at the back when you think you've rounded the front of a car or the back. If you're waddling the bike along and they're protruding ever so slightly further than the panniers, you've really just got to make sure you don't clip people. Not that you'd be any worse off, because they're crash bars after all, but we're all considerate road users as motorcyclists, aren't we? The brakes are pretty decent as well, which is obviously important when you're riding around town, but the one thing that does great on me somewhat is the linked brakes so any new bike nowadays i believe that doesn't have abs has to by law have linked brakes so the front brake on this bike operates as normal but the rear brake pedal operates both the front and rear brake so if you stamp on that you get this weird sensation of the front diving which you're totally not used to it's got to be a legislation 
thought up by someone who doesn't ride a bike because it's really annoying and makes it far more difficult to ride from my perspective anyway I'm not sure if you're a beginner perhaps that's different but for anyone who's ridden a bike for any amount of time it's just way less nuanced you feel like you've got a lot less control so things like if you want to drag the rear brake just to give you a bit of stability doing your low speed maneuvers which some people like to do myself included you can't do that because it'll heave on the front brake as well but perhaps more annoyingly you can't balance the front and rear brake so whatever you you know you get out of the pedal is what you're stuck with you can maybe give the front brake lever a pull and get a bit more pressure out of that but i've found myself occasionally come into a sharp stop and the back locks up so much easier because as soon as the front brakes go on the front end dives and the tail of the bike there's you know much less weight on it and so the the, the rear wheel locks up whilst the front is under heavy braking i don't think this is sinus's fault at all because um generally the brakes are excellent when you consider what you're paying as well it's just a stupid law and I do wonder if there's any way to put a blanking stopper or, or something like that in the brake line from the pedal to the front brake. Apparently there's a decent community of Sinis Terrain owners on Facebook, so perhaps it's worth checking there. As for power, 11 horses from the Air Cool 125 is plenty enough around town. Yes, you have to leave a little bit more space or a little bit more margin for error if you're overtaking and that kind of thing, but when I say overtaking as well, I kind of mean filtering around town. If you see that there's a, a bit of a gap in the traffic up ahead and you want to make it past a couple of cars, you've got to make sure you've got ample time to do so. But in a way, it's a beautiful thing because... When else do you get to hear your motorbike's engine? If you're a, you know, a city rider, when else do you get to hear it, like, really making that kind of noise? Never! You know, I can't really ride my street twin like that because you'd be way over the speed limit before you know it. But every time you pull away from the lights on this bike, you can just absolutely pin the throttle and bang through first, second, third, and it gives you that sound of a bike that they use in the races before the MotoGP, if you know what I mean. Allow me to demonstrate. I'll open my lid so you can hear a bit better. See, that's good fun. You know, if you've got to go to work for a boring day in the office, at least you get to do that for half an hour beforehand and then half an hour at the end of the day as well. So yeah, as a commuter, I've thoroughly enjoyed riding this bike for the last couple of weeks. A big part of it's been the practicality, you know, it's a comfy bike with wide high bars, good mirrors, uh, easy to get through the traffic, lots of luggage space, but I've got to say, it surprised me with how much fun I've actually had doing it as well. Well, uh, I haven't done a lot of motorway riding on this bike, but I thought I owed it to you to give it a little bit of a go. But I'm going to start out here on the A20 where it's just at 50 miles an hour and just see how we get on. Thankfully, we've got a little ramp to descend here, which will get us up to 50 nice and quickly. But I've got a feeling that 50 might be uh, about the extent of this bike's capabilities when it comes to a slight incline. That's not to say that it's an uncomfortable riding position. I think you could really go far on this bike if speed wasn't really an issue. The position of the bars is good, the seat's good, the foot peg position's decent as well. The screen gives you a bit of protection here, so do the handguards. And the fuel economy on this thing, you've got a 14 litre tank and I think it can do something like 300 miles on a tank, which is handy if you want to do a bit of touring. Okay, we're up to 70 speed limit here. We're in fifth gear at 8,000 revs, it'll redline at 9,000 revs and we're at 62. 63 but we're almost at the red line probably have to let this guy in so that's gonna screw things up for me ever so slightly because now I'm down at 55 and there's no way this bike is gonna accelerate uphill well I can a little bit maybe because I'm in the draft of this uh, van in front 
so there's not as much wind resistance but it's going a little bit better uphill than it was before I'm probably a little bit lucky that this guy isn't going that fast to give the illusion that it's this guy holding everyone up but not me no he's pulling off come on 55 57 properly got the throttle entirely open here 59 as soon as you get behind a lorry or something and get the benefit of the uh, slipstream so maybe this is it only take it on well-known trucking routes that way you've got some buddies around you to trundle along with this is actually not at all that bad I mean it's comfy but it's probably not the most fun you can have on a motorcycle either I think I might come off here and find something else to do look brands hatch probably not that see this is more so the kind of touring that you want to be doing on this bike is little villages and back roads and b roads and 11 horsepower doesn't sound like much but it's pretty much enough if you're riding solo to have some good fun on these roads and despite it being quite a lightweight bike because of all the you know the two mud guards on the front the decent headlight cluster and, and uh, instrument cluster decent mirrors hand guards it has a certain weightiness to it it almost feels quite planted for such a little bike there's no problem really keeping up with traffic on these types of roads Just cruise along easily can even overtake people look cheers brother especially if someone moves over and there's absolutely no reason you can't have a bit of fun on corners like that you know you don't get that acceleration rush that you get with a big bike but the brakes are enough to slow you up quickly the fact that their link doesn't matter so much when you're rolling into a corner like that and the suspension it's not bad it's comfy but it holds its line fairly well definitely feels more at home on this kind of road the fast single lane roads All right, so you're probably not going to do the Dakar Rally on this 125, but you know, if you're buying a little adventure bike like this, you might want to do a little bit of green lane in, be able to ride over some trash that someone's fly tipped. No problem. So yeah, I thought I'd include a quick segment of Pilgrim's Way, which is a byway that I found through the Byways Maps uh, website. But this is exactly the sort of thing you want a little adventure bike to do like this is handle a little bit of uh, gravel track like this and it's decent I mean at least it's nice and light the bars are wide you can stand up easily on these big foot pegs and the bars are high enough for it the suspensions up to the job on stuff like this I mean if you jump in it or taking on some massive bumps it might not work but seems fine and actually these tires have decent enough tread and grip for this sort of stuff I guess the limiting factor again for some riders especially those who know how to slide it around a little bit will be the uh, link brakes are a bit shit aren't they but whoa. where can we go from here what a beautiful day See, I would love to just give the rear brake a bit of a stomp and get it sliding around because although I don't ride motorbikes off-road much, I did mountain bike a bit when I was younger. Not that successfully, I'll admit, but certainly know how to rip a fat skid. Whoa! Oh! Hmm, this might be the end of the road for me and the Sinis. Whoop! <laughs> and I stalled it. Oh. Can I sneak through? 
lock the front up a little bit there. Prime example of those, well, nah, that was just probably rider error. Stupidly, I'm actually looking a little bit low on fuel of all the parts of this ride to run out of petrol on. It's this bit, but, oh, this is absolutely loads of fun. Seems like a good spot for a picture. Man, I've had a lot of fun with this bike this afternoon. So I'm on the way home and I'm in Ainsford, Ains Ford, hence there's a there's a Ford here, and I'm thinking this is gonna make an epic end to the video if I ride through it. On the other hand, Sam, Danny, the guys at Sinis, if I drop the bike in a river, I would totally understand if you never spoke to me again. But then again, it's the mark of a true adventure bike is a river crossing. And I owe it to my audience to test out this high level exhaust. Then again, there's lots of people here. If I do drop it, I'm gonna look stupid. Then again, it's like 35 degrees and I'm boiling. This would be a nice way to cool down. Oh, I'm just gonna do it. Woo! <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gents. If it can go through a Ford, it's an adventure bike. A two and a half thousand pound adventure bike, albeit. Shall I go back through the other way? I became pretty fond of this bike over the two weeks I had it. Of course, it's not the quickest and the brakes got on my nerves a bit, but it's super practical for city riding, really comfortable for daily commuting, and ultimately about as much fun as you can possibly have for a two and a half grand motorcycle brand new.